What is up, fellow bench warmers? This is your daily fantasy quickie. What's up, guys? Welcome to another daily fantasy quickie. We are sorry we missed out on yesterday's quickie. Uh, happy Valentine's, by the way, to everyone listening in. Uh, wherever part of the world you are, my name is JJT, and with us is Komish. Komish, how was yeah. the week? Judgment Day, by the way. In case you, uh, I know it's Super Bowl. It was an uneventful Judgment Day because there were just two games, uh, and very early games at that. Um, yeah, how was the week for you? Uh one. Yeah, won, won some, lost some. I had uh, some close. The, the good news is I lost close matchups, but they are the, in the matchups in the leagues that I needed to win. So mm, it's getting to be exciting. I'm close to going out of the playoffs, but <laughs> getting uh, near out to be out. Yeah, some, some, for some leagues, uh, this coming week would be their last week for the elimination round. Um, yeah. Because there are leagues where in playoffs start week 19. Um, for some leagues, this is they have two more for the fantasy bench warmers leagues, uh, two more weeks because we have ours at week 20. Uh, playoffs start at week 20, top eight. We'll give some updates later on, uh, or maybe tomorrow, if not tomorrow, sometime this week, on where teams are. There are some teams that are close, there are some. Uh, Leagues were in there's um, you know, pretty much set, right? Most of the positions, um, yeah. But we'll find a way to update you guys uh, for that. All right, let's talk about some news, um, injury news. Uh, the biggest, I guess, is Zach. Oh, Norm Powell, I think, was the biggest one. Um, out indefinitely. Um, and toe toe injury, right? Is it a Toe injury, a foot no, injury. Uh, or yeah, well, uh, at first it was said that it was a toe injury, but apparently it's a fractured foot. Mm-hmm. So um, people have been asking if it's a drop. I think it's a drop. Uh, fractured foot that looks like a six to eight week thing. So at, at we're at week eighteen. I don't think I don't think he's be he's gonna be uh, usable. But if you have a IL, of course you stash him there. But if not, you know you can move on. Yeah. I have him in a dynasty league, so yeah, another problem. And just when I thought I was, I can still make it uh, because I'm one game behind the leader with uh, Lonzo, Norm Powell right now, and Rashawn Holmes playing badly. Uh, yeah, well, well, that's how it is. And it, it's a pity because he seems to be the guy in the Clippers. He's like... Yeah. He's becoming the go-to guy. So now what happens in the Clippers is you're basically going back to their old rotation. Right? I mean... Now the to, question is... Yeah. Robert Covington, do you think this helps him? Or does it impact him much, much? Actually... Because he's Robert the guy Co- that's not really performing, right? The players who has who hasn't really performed since being traded. Uh, Coffee has, has had some so-so games... Terrence Mann is the guy that's been really hot because he's being used to as a backup point guard. Uh, Kennard is so-so. He's hitting some two, three threes uh, sometimes. Um, Covington is non-existent uh, and the minutes aren't as much as well. So do you think this impacts him or gives him better value? I don't think it really impacts him a lot. Uh, although Covington is actually one of my losers, uh, I haven't talked about him a lot, but he's gotten 14 and 10 minutes, I think 10 and 14 minutes the past two games. I think uh, Covington is more at the power forward spot. The problem is Marcus Morris is playing well, Zubak played well, and they're trying to play Hartenstein. So I, I doubt I doubt he's going to be playing small forward. Plus, they already have Batum, they have Coffey, they have, as you said, Terrence Mann and everybody else there. So maybe a little, but I don't expect a lot of change. I, I, I'm I worried about Covington, but I think it, it's his nature, right? He just disappears. <laughs> you know, he has these stretches. I think he'll he'll bounce back eventually. But I don't think it has anything to do with Powell 
being injured, he will eventually get his groove. Yeah, uh, he's a anyways. slow. How do you call this? A slow starter. Uh, he's an enigma. He, he he can give you four steals, three. You know what? You know what? Then, Covington will do to yeah. you. He will get you to the point where you are really close, that close to dropping him. And then he gives mm-hmm. you a good game. Right? Uh, That's how he is. Has always yeah. been. Uh, yeah. Not, not looking good. The, the Clippers are deep. They're a deep team. And Kai Lu uh, is not afraid to use pretty much everyone in their roster. Yes. Uh, whoever's really helping the team at that point. So, so yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, yeah. The question here is who replaces Norm Powell? Um, everyone's adding Terrence Mann because he's the hot guy right now. Um, I like Kofi a lot because of the stat set he provides. And like the last time out, he's, he gives more than just scoring and rebounding, right? So, uh, yeah, but right now, lots of... Uh, do you like Mann over Kofi or any other guy? Like Kennard? Kennard is questionable, for, for, I think, but yeah. For now, it's Mann over Kofi. Yeah. Clippers has always, have always been the hot man up. Right, that's that's how they play. I mean, Man was basically playing 12, 13 minutes a couple of weeks ago, and Coffee was playing 30, 32 minutes. So, right now it's Man, but I added Coffee uh, just for FYI. Of I didn't add, I, I didn't add Man. I added Coffee because I sense that Coffee is more uh, stable, like steady. Man is up and down. Like there will be times it just disappears in 10, 9 minutes. I see Coffee always getting 25, 20, 30 minutes. So. I, I just prefer that. Maybe man will be hotter and get more production late uh, for the next few games. But overall, I think coffee will be more dependable and will prevent us from going crazy. And, and he gives you a lot more than just yes. scoring and rebounding because yes. man gives you rebounding and scoring most of the time. And nothing else really. Yeah. Not no, not much stocks. Assists, not really as much. So, yeah. Uh, you can pick your... Choose your guy. Uh, I added... Man in some leagues, and I added coffee in some leagues, so I won't feel bad uh, whenever mm. one struggles, right? Uh, Zach Levine is another injury worry. This one's a bit worrying because he's going to see a specialist uh, for his injury. But uh, the good news is he said that he's going to still make it to the All-Star weekend. Um, you know, everybody says that. Everybody says that. I'm still going to play in the All-Star game because they, but the fans chose me. They want to see me. But if he goes to the specialist and the specialist tells him to rest <laughs> or, you know, there's something wrong with his knee, you know, those will go out the window. So I don't, I don't give it much, you know, much weight. Uh, I'm still worried. There's though. swelling or some discomfort in his knee Yes, that, he's, that he is worried about. Uh, yeah. We don't really care We'd rather have him not go to the All-Star game and just rest the knee as fantasy managers. Uh, we don't care about what he's joining, what does the three-point shootout? Yeah, the three-point shootout. And then he's also in the All-Star game itself. So that's two days. The three-point shootout is not, <laughs> it's not an easy event. It's, yeah. it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a taxing event also. So yes, I, I prefer him to rest it out. And I think he will. If he plays, it, it just put it this way, if he does join the All-Star game, then it's good news. Then it's probably just, you know, the doctor just gave him, a, you know, it's fine. No, what there's think, nothing practically wrong. There's a possibility that he goes to the All-Star, plays two to five minute. minutes, yeah, three minutes, and then not play at all. It happens. It has happened to other yeah. All-Star players. Yeah. Yes. Um, just for the sake that he's there and shows shows up, right? So, yeah. Uh, but, like I said, we'd rather have him be healthy for the next couple of weeks in terms of fantasy and not hurt himself during the All-Star. Um, Pat Connaughton, another player who will undergo surgery, Yeah, uh, I think in the hand, right? Yes, the hand uh, fracture also in the hand. He's probably out for the season. Yeah. Putting Grayson Allen as the... Out for the fantasy as- season. Yeah, uh, probably the only... I, I don't think Pat Connaughton will be ready by the start of the playoffs. He might come back during the playoffs, but I doubt the start of the playoffs he'll be ready. But uh, we'll see. Grayson Allen is the lone guy remaining there as they have traded away Dante also and Rodney Hood. So I think he's worth a shot. 
uh, give him a look, uh, Grayson Allen. Of yeah. course, there's other injuries also, like uh, John Collins was also held out because we didn't talk about him as we didn't have a quickie yesterday. He was he's been he's uh, gonna be out until the All Star break. So yeah, uh, with the heel injury, which is the injury I think that's been bothering him for quite some yes. time now. So yes, uh, they might want him to just rest it out. Like we said, this week, this coming week is like uh, a rest week for a lot of players. Right, this is the time where Teams get their top guys to rest uh, if they're not part of the All Star uh, festival. Duarte, Duarte, Duarte is also yeah, is the yeah. other guy who's also injured. But, but people have been asking, if, you know, drop him or whatever. I don't think you should drop people who are out until the All Star break because it sounds bad. He's out until the All Star break, but the All Star break is it's next it's week, on Thursday. It's on this this week. It's this, it's this week. week. Yeah, it's, it's this week. Yeah, it's basically they're gonna. It, it just means they're out for two games. But you know, they 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 make it sound like he's out for a long time. He's out until the other. <laughs> yeah, but so, so you know, at this point, at this point, with the opportunities that he will have, Duarte, I'm talking about Duarte. I don't think he's that. I mean, unless you're in a sh- very shallow league, maybe a twelve team, you could pick up some guys there. But the opportunities mm-hmm. that Duarte would be the opportunities that he would be given. Uh, I don't think. He should be dropped, especially if you have an IL slot or an IL plus yeah. slot available, right? Um, yeah, he shouldn't be dropped there. Uh, but yeah, we'll see. Uh, other new? Uh, do you have other injury on your list? Ah, uh, no, that's that's it, basically. Mitchell Robinson. Mitchell, yeah, Mitchell Robinson got hurt uh, again. Imagine I, I after that double double, he he's pretty much hurt since then. I, I, I don't expect him to play also until the All-Star <laughs> until after the All-Star break uh, yeah. I think they will rest him out but yeah, we'll never say never but I think you just expect him to be out you probably won't drop Mitchell Robinson I, I doubt you would centers are hard to come by um, uh, Brooklyn will be showcasing now their newly acquired players uh, Seth Curry Andre Drummond interestingly for Drummond Nick Claxton and Lamarcus are not on the injury report. So this is going to be interesting because we felt that Drummond would be the guy there to own. And he is probably the best pickup of the trade deadline in case you were he's in the waiver wire. But now with three centers ready to play, looks like it could be a battle. I still I still feel that he's still the guy, the best ad of the Aside from Vassell, Vassell and Drummond are probably close. But it will be a battle. But he should get 20 to 25, at least 25 minutes, right? Uh, that's what I'm thinking. He should get that. But I don't know. That's Let's what, see. You know, that's what we fought last year. When yeah, he was but, bought out and signed mm-hmm. by the Lakers. But the Nets do need him a, uh, a lot. Uh, they need him a lot. And... Uh, he's better than Claxton. And they, the Nets actually wanted to trade Claxton, but we're not able to find the deal. So maybe it shows that, you know, they're more invested in Ramon. They're not in the develop your player kind of mode. They want to win. Yeah. So I guess Ramon gives them a better chance to do that. Yeah. And yeah. the Marcus, uh, I don't think he is much of a threat. They will preserve the Marcus most likely until the playoffs. So, you know. Yeah. Yes, he's Plus, not an ad anymore. He's not really a, you know, he's not really a, um, an asset on the defensive end. So that's yeah. going to be a problem for Brooklyn, uh, who doesn't really play much defense. So, uh, so yeah, those are the news for today. Some buy players. Okay, let's look at the schedule first before we talk about the buy. Maybe we'll be able to run through the buy. Schedule for this week. It's a two calendar week, week eighteen. Um, yeah. So and we have the pre All Star and the post All Star schedules. Um, Komish had some nice uh, posts there about the schedule in our schedule analyzer. Um, yeah, what are the things we need to look forward to? I, I would for? divide the I, I would divide week eighteen into two. I would first half and second half, and then also remember that you won't get a new set of moves yeah. for the second half. So you'll have just. Four moves, five moves, three moves, or whatever your moves is for all, all two weeks. And then remember that there will be eight playing days instead of seven. 
So mm-hmm. there's actually a lot of games for this week. There's no, no two or three game uh, days. They're always 9, 7, 11, 5, 7, 9, 7, 8. So, so my, my, my strategy here would be to get teams that have three games on the first half and then drop them after and then pick up players who are who who have games on the second three games on the second half. Mm-hmm. So, uh, for instance, uh, Brooklyn, Washington, Milwaukee, they have uh, three games in the first half. Yeah. So those players, you can just add one player there. Let's say Cam Thomas. Let's say uh, Grayson Thomas Adam Bryant. Talked about Thomas Bryant, Raul Neto. Or maybe Ishmit, Corey Kispert, one of those players. They have three games in the first half. So that 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 gives you a big advantage already. And then yeah. in the second half, look at the scheduler. Then get uh, you know, whichever teams have three games in that second half. Or in, this, your... or in the second half, you get a player that helps your you win your matchup, right? I mean, doesn't that necessarily mm-hmm. mean you have uh depends on the number of moves that you have. Um but yeah, either get it based on the schedule or get it based on the players and then look for the players who has the best schedule. Um, Actually, the, need, the Rockets also have three games in the first half and the Clippers also have three games in the first half. So there's a lot of ads there. I mean, the Clippers, as we just talked about. Yeah. Coffee, the Clippers man. itself, right? Man, yeah. co- coffee, uh, but two might get into play. Um, for for deeper leagues, I guess. Um, yes, yes. Um, so, who else? Uh, there's uh, there are like three to four people there. Kennard, if he plays, if he plays, because I think but he's, he's injured. So yeah, yeah. Yo, but we're Kennard. talking about the second half, um, right? If we're talking about second half, he might come back after the All Star. So something to but, but, consider. But, yeah, but the second half they don't have the three games. You have to look at the other teams that have three games there. The, actually, the, some of the teams have three games, have only one game in the second half. So, so you 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 have that, that's why it's good to uh, you know separate the two of them to yeah. maximize your moves. Yeah. So, so yeah, I think that's going to be key. Like I said, for some, this week is the last week of elimination. So, mm-hmm. if you don't make it, um, yeah, you're pr- pretty much out of it. Uh, so yeah. So if you're fighting for that slot and and. I guess for the others who are already safe when it comes to their playoff position, uh, what advice do you give them? Just relax. Look at your, chill. Uh, look at your playoff schedule. Look at your playoff schedule. I, I will release the playoff schedule. I am going to release it on the All-Star break. Yeah. I already have it prepared, but uh, I don't want to release it right away just to give you some, you know, guys... <laughs> He'll make the I moves thinking, first. He'll make the moves first. Actually, actually, actually I mean, just, I mean, uh, that's the right <laughs> thing to do, right? You make the moves first, and that's the advantage you have. Uh, you'll make yeah. use, make use of all the yeah. advantages that we have uh, with these uh, because of the 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 podcast. Yeah. So, commission will but, make but, the but, moves first, and then throw it, throw out the the ske- the the article. And let you guys realize that yeah, there's really not much moves to make because Komish already made the moves for you. <laughs> you know, actually the moves you can't make them too early. I you yeah, I, that too. probably the trade trade offers uh, that, that 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 will give you an advantage. But yeah, that's what you should do. Just look at your playoff schedule. Because for instance, I'll just give an example. Uh, Tyrese Halliburton and Jay, uh, Indiana and Boston, they have a really bad playoff schedule. And that makes Tyrese the trade the trade that Tyrese, you know, went to Indiana really bad for people who own Halliburton. So that's something like that. Make I don't know, I'm not telling you to trade him right away. Just yeah. just, you know, consider. Consider that, you know, he doesn't have a good playoff schedule. Regardless if you start week 19 or week 20 or week 21 or 22, Indiana doesn't have a good playoff schedule. So uh, that, that, that's just a preview of what, what you can expect. So maybe think, I don't know, trade Halliburton for Chris Paul. I don't know. That's, that, I'm not saying to do that, but Chris Paul does have a good playoff schedule. But I don't know if Chris Paul will play until the end. So something it also way... depends on um, your trade deadline. Um, and yeah. I think I, I made a mistake on some of the league's trade deadline because I think I put it at March 17, which is a little too late. 
because we ah, start well. playoffs at March 20. Um, okay. So I might move it up a bit just just to a precaution because we don't want trades during the playoffs at this point, right? Uh, uh-huh. That that's uh, I don't think that's going to be a good idea. Uh, having trades during the playoffs, so so yeah, uh, I don't know if it's gonna that's gonna impact, but I, I probably won't move it and just veto any trade offers during the the span. But yeah, if I can move it, I'll probably move it. Just just for those listening who are part of our league, because when I made the leagues, um, I realized that we didn't have a trade deadline date yet. Yeah, and uh, so we didn't um, uh, we didn't know when was the trade deadline. For the NBA, at that time. So yeah. Anyway, we'll probably make the moves there. Uh, anyway, some buy players just in case you're looking for players to add. O'Shea Brissett continued his hotter runs. Um, another great game today. And Lance uh, Stevenson of Indiana. I think Jalen Smith, Lance Jaylen Stevenson, Smith. O'Shea yeah. Brissett. A lot of people have been asking about O'Shea and uh, I said, you have to add him. You have to add him right now. He's getting 35, 38 minutes a while ago. Uh, I don't know. Isaiah Jackson will hurt him eventually. But for next week or at least, you know, until Isaiah comes back, I think he's their power forward with Jalen Smith. Goga, for me, is a drop. Even even without Miles. I, I prefer Jalen and I, I'm pretty sure Indiana will find out that Jalen is way better than Goga. Eventually, and they're they're, fi- they're 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 seeing it now. Uh, Jalen Smith had seventeen and twelve today. I mean, while yeah. Miles is out, yeah, <laughs> then they're gonna said. make that switch. They're gonna make that switch. Uh, so there, and Lance Stephenson also. He's been playing well. If he's get given twenty eight to thirty minutes, he's always producing. So I think the three are good good ads. Yeah. So uh, and, and Goga, I I don't know who said it, but the game. It's too fast for Goga. I forgot Maybe he said it. Maybe he's too slow. <laughs> he's too slow. The game is yes. too fast. He's too slow for the game. And that that could probably hurt his minutes. And, and of course, if you look at it, Jalen Smith, Isaiah Jackson, these are athletic guys, are faster guys. Uh, and O'Shea, they're faster guys. And with Halliburton, I'm pretty sure they want to push the pace a little bit more. Um so as not to waste the talent, right? Of what yeah. Halliburton can do. So yeah, Jalen Smith. Uh, just add them while they're hot, right? Easy to drop them later on. Uh, I think O'Shea is not uh, available in a lot of leagues already. I picked him up in one. Jalen Smith has been added already since the trade deadline. I think because so I don't see any Jalen Smith. In the wires. I if if there is, I will re- I will rank them O'Shea, Jalen, and then Lance. Yeah, that's how I rank. Them. And where does this put Isaiah Jackson? Ah oh, man, I'm, uh, I'm slowly I, I, starting to get to the point where in you should not expect much now from Isaiah Jackson. I dropped Isaiah Jackson already. I can't wait. Uh, I just can't wait. I don't know when he's coming back and when he comes back. As I said, Jalen and uh, Reset is gonna be there. Miles will be there. Miles is about to come back. So uh, I I'm not waiting because I don't have an extra IL spot anyway. I'm not waiting anymore. Yeah, I'll go with a hot hand. Yeah. So so yeah, there those three players from Indiana, DeAndre Hunter and Gallinari, other two players in the buy list. For, yeah, for for uh, Collins, just for the for this next uh, next few games. Collins is out until the play, uh, All-Star All Star break. Right. Yeah. yeah. So oh, it it does seem like Okongwu is not gonna benefit. So uh, Okongwu could be dropped now. I think. Yes. Yes. Uh, in a I lot think of so. leagues, um, maybe a hold in maybe an eighteen. But if you get you know Jalen Smith, I'd probably have that. Um, mm-hmm. Or O'Shea, then uh, Okongwu at this point. Uh, the only hope you have is, of course. As a handcuff for Capella, especially in the deeper leagues, right? Um, I have him in an 18 team league where, um, yeah, I have Capella as well. So, so yeah, that's that should be something. But I've seen Okongwu being dropped already in a lot of leagues, all right? Trade analysis for the day. Let's talk about some trade. I, 
Let's talk about the trade in one of the FBW leagues. Uh, the recent trade. The uh, Sadiq Bay and uh, who's that guy? Who's the guy I told you about? Sadiq Bay and oh, wait, let me see. I sent it to I you. Think it, it's for Grayson. I don't know. Mark Sadiq Mark? and Suggs. Uh, Sadiq and Suggs for Covington and Giddy. And Giddy. Oh, and Giddy. Uh, Okay. Uh, yeah, I told you that I think the deal is hard to judge because, of course, Covington is struggling with the Clippers. We don't. If 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 this was in Portland, you will say, yeah, Covington will get it back. He'll, you know, he'll yeah. get it going. But we're not sure because this is the Clippers. This is a new environment, a new team. So that's why there's a question mark there. And then, of course, Giddy for me, as I told you guys way long before. He's a little overrated because of the efficiency problems. The ranking is way down. So it does look like uh, they're selling, I guess, they're selling Covington. The, the, the player, the team that's getting Covington is buying him low, in a way. Yeah. Because he's just getting Suggs and he's giving up Suggs and Bay. The, the issue with Bay, meanwhile, Bay is a sell high. So it's like a, a sell low, Sell high combined because Bay is playing well, but how for how long? I mean, Jeremy is there and Cade is there. Cade is there. Cade just came back so, right from an injury. Exactly. So, yeah, I think it's a fair deal. I just feel like it's a fair deal. Yeah, and Suggs has always been up and down. I mean, throughout the season, hasn't really been consistent. Plus, um, yeah, but you could, you know, it's like taking a flyer as well on Suggs for later on, right, for the playoffs. Um, but again, yes. <laughs> everything is really hard to judge. I mean, later on, Giddy might, you know, I know Giddy is going to be rested a bit, right? But we don't know what happens two weeks well, down the line where playoffs start or three weeks where maybe you're in the semifinals. We don't know what Giddy, Giddy heard that. He had a triple double yesterday. The other yeah, day, yeah, I saw that. I saw that. It's like Giddy and Suggs for me. They're very inefficient players. I give Giddy the edge a little bit for now, but Suggs, the steals of Suggs is also good. So they're very near. People might not think they're near, but they're 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 close. They're close. Now it's it boils down to Bay and Covington. Even yeah. if you don't like Covington, you would agree that Covington has been ranked is better player fantasy wise than Bay. Yeah. But lately, Bay is the better player than Covington because yeah. of you know. If someone's hot or someone's cold. That's why, you know, it, it's perfect. Someone feels like Covington is a buy low. Someone feels that Bay is a sell high. So it's just, you know. Yeah. The uncertainty is there. Evaluation. And that's where the gray area comes in, right? How do you yeah. Yeah, how do you rank them? Uh, but yeah, they're not far apart. Um, if you know, like this power development can, like we said, we don't know what's gonna happen with this. And, and we know the Clippers can play different rotations, different players, right? Uh, yeah, although commissioned that he doesn't feel that um, Covington would get boost, get a boost with his foul injury. But still, uh, but, but, but as who good as Comish which, is, he's not yet Tai Lu. Which, which side do you prefer anyway? The Bay or the Covington side? I like to take chances on the Covington side. Okay. I like that Covington uh-huh. side. I'm not a big fan of Bay. I know he's hot. But like you said, uh, he can hurt you still in a lot of, you know, the field goal. Yeah, so I like the GD side. Although, of course, I'm going to take that. It depends on where I'm at as well. Yeah, yeah. And how high am I on Covington? If I'm in, you know, if I'm in the, you know, maybe in the middle of the pack already, I could take my chances. To be honest, it's not a big ask. What what he gave away for Covington and Giddy, I don't think it's a very big ask, right? Yeah. Uh, not not really the game changer type we're in. You know, it can swing really the momentum or the 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 power of the team. Yeah. So it's a fair it's a fair ask. Everyone I asked in the, for about that deal uh, said, you know, that's just fine. So, um, yeah, again, we'll see. We'll see what happens. We've seen crazier deals 
this is not actually a crazy deal. I think when I saw it, I already knew, yeah, this should, should be good. Um, yeah, we've seen crazier deals happen wherein trade looks fair, and then one side gets two players hurt for the end of their season. So, I mean, uh, things can happen. All right, that's it for our daily fantasy quickie. Closing into the playoffs. We'll again see you tomorrow. Uh, and we're closing into the all star break. A break we might need as fantasy managers uh, where we just have fun and watch the All-Star game. All right. We'll see you again tomorrow, guys. Happy Valentine's and have a good week ahead. Bye.